guys, Will here with WTF Car Reviews and today we're gonna be reviewing this all new 2022 Hyundai Tucson N-Line. And before we start, I'd like to give a huge thanks to Eli and the rest of the management and staff here at Brandon Hyundai in Tampa, Florida for making this review possible. I'll leave a link to their inventory below and if you're in the market for a new car or truck in the Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out. And for those of you guys who don't know, the Tucson has been Hyundai's compact SUV since 2005. That's when the first generation was released. The fourth generation that you see here is all new for 2022. And here we have the N-Line trim. Throughout Hyundai's lineup, N-Line typically means high performance, but not top of the line. The N is Hyundai's top performance trim level. The N-Line here, however, uses the exact same power plant as every other non-hybrid Hyundai Tucson. Here the N-Line is the mid trim. It's sits right in between the SE and the top of the line limited. There's five trims all together, starting around 31,500. As you see, the rain is really picking up today. Let's jump right in. So up front, you notice your daytime running lights with the headlights in the corners, full blacked out grill, solid airflow too. It is all functional, blacked out Hyundai badge in the center for the N-Line trim and an N-Line badge in the corner. As far as the wheel and tire setup, let's hurry up and hop over here. We get these really nice 19 inch rims wrapped in 235-55 R19 Michelin Primacy all season tires with the outline not plastic cladding but we have the body color kind of like a fender flare very aggressive look for this n-line trim another n-line badge on the fender well led turn signal on the glass folding mirrors very large mirrors too. blind spot monitoring on the glass as well we have the blacked out trim for the n-line for the window trim smart access for the driver and a front passenger as far as the window sticker it's probably going to be very tough for you guys to see but try to pause take a look at all the features i'm not trying to stand in the rain just reading these off of course we get a 2.5 liter four cylinder with the eight speed automatic transmission 31,200 for the base price 200 for the cargo package and about 400 dollars in additional cargo mats and covers $1,245 for destination gives us a total price right at $33,000. Good fuel economy, 29 combined, 26 city, 33 on the highway, continuing along. No smart access in the rear. The gas cap is pushed to open, no easy fill, which is kind of odd for a vehicle that's brand new for 2022. My phone is alerting me that it's getting really wet, so I'm going to try to hurry up back here. Same wheel and tire setup. We get the reflector, LED tail lamps with the turn signals and reverse lights. The reverse lights are actually in the lower center area or lower corner area. Parking sensors, dual exhaust tips also specific for the N-Line trim. Tucson in the corner. I'm liking how the light strip connects in the center. Hyundai badge for where most of the wipers would be but in the, but here for the tucson the wipers integrated flushly right underneath the third brake light with the spoiler but the rain's really picking up i'm not going to give you guys any exhaust clips there's really not a whole lot of noise with this 2.5 liter four cylinder let's get inside and avoid losing my camera because of that pretty heavy rain but first thing we notice inside is that we have some really nice quality materials the steering wheel has this beautiful red contrast stitching. The door panel is soft touch up top, similar trim to what we just saw in the Santa Cruz that we reviewed. A little bit of soft touch cloth in the center area, hard plastic surrounding the blacked out chrome aluminum door handle, soft touch leather for the armrest, red contrast stitching. I apologize for all this water. I'm gonna wipe it down before I return this vehicle. There's really not much I can do when it's torrential downpouring like it is right now. Auto one touch for the first, for the front two passengers, four way adjustable mirrors, solid storage beneath two. You're easily fitting a foot long with no problems, but really no cup holder. They're, they're trying to do something in the corner, but really not very functional. Bose sound system, the speakers sound very nice. Aluminum pedals, and you see a very large dead pedal, interior brightness, trunk opening, and we have our trash control, which you can disable. To open up your hood, you have a latch in the left corner, tilt and telescoping steering wheel. And like we mentioned, the steering wheel is absolutely beautiful. Perforated leather for the nine and three, the 10 and two notch is excellent. Red contrast stitching, same adjustments when it comes to the buttons on the steering wheel as most Hyundai's voice commands, AM, FM, and Sirius. Volume adjustments, skip their songs, uh, answer your phone calls and favorites. Lane keep assist and active steering, radar cruise control too. Hill descent control and the overall cruise control adjustments. These two buttons adjust your 12 inch display. Right now we're in normal mode. So we're looking at 160 mile an hour speedometer and a 6,500 RPM tack. We can adjust it. Right now we're looking at a digital speedo. We can also look at our drive information, since refueling, accumulated info, and auto start stop. But right back to our digital speedo. We also have the user settings with the driver assistance, cluster, lights, door, digital keys, convenience, units, and factory reset. Tire pressure, which we can see at all times. We don't have to be driving to see it. 
you press this button one more time we're looking at our advanced safety features and you can press ok for the settings and you can disable all the features that you don't want activated and your attention load my personal favorite is just look at a digital speedo at all times beneath we have our fuel level temperature outside average mpgs and miles on the vehicle up top for the dashboard everything is soft touch very similar to the santa cruz we just reviewed on this channel we get an eight inch touch screen it's kind of dated not the most modern the 10.25 inch screen that these that hyundai has is significantly nicer but still very nice to get a touch screen apple carplay and android auto overall setup we have sound device connection display button general blue link wi-fi and climate we also get the hard buttons which are still touch sensors for the climate however the temperature adjustments are a hard button we can turn this air down by a little so i don't get sick because i am soaking wet but shortcuts if you don't want to go through the touch screen my personal favorites look at it at all times just be this home screen backup camera get those thing into reverse and very nice resolution for the backup camera we get guidance lines and trajectory no 360 like we do for the limited trim but still a very nice backup camera and if you don't want to use the manual shift controls unfortunately for the end line trim it would be expected to get paddle shifters we do not get paddle shifters if you want to shift manually you have to do it in the improper directions to upshift and downshift but we'll throw it right back into park the cup holders are dumbbell shaped just like the santa cruz you get these flappy things to keep your drinks in place drive mode selector right now we're in normal mode you also get smart and sport we'll start off in normal transition into sport and just see what the differences are Hill descent control, auto hold for the electronic parking brake, and if you want to see your camera as while you're driving, you just got to press this button, and you're looking at your backup camera again. Two different views. You have an over-the-top view, so if you have like a trailer package or a towing package, you can line up your trailer hitch to its receiver. Press the button, press the button one more time, you return to your home screen. Heated front seats, leather armrest, which is kind of wet right now because I was just in that torrential downpour. Red contrast stitching, and it's a very soft, nice spot for your arm. The space, impressive, just like the Santa Cruz we just reviewed, you'll probably fit in a six pack of 20 ounce water bottles with no issues, very spacious console. Open up the glove box and it's just as spacious as the Santa Cruz. It's really a very similar front seat space. You're fitting about 20 license plates, easily fitting a pair of shoes. Frameless rear view mirror with three garage home link settings on it. No panoramic moonroof on this end line. Pretty base model, sitting around 33,000 bucks after destination very good value for what you get no sunglass holder unfortunately but again really not a big deal you get this super spacious center console if you want to put any of your stuff in there higher rollover risk too i don't really think it's very easy to roll this thing over the handling is very sharp especially with this end line the steering feels really on center we'll check that out once we take it out for a drive looks like the rain calmed down perfect timing because we're about to hop out of this front seat check out the back real quick check out the trunk afterwards hopefully the rain stays low and then take this thing out for a drive so we'll shut the door up because it is still raining pretty decently heavy up top hard plastic beneath we still get more of that cloth trim with the hard plastic surrounding the smoked chrome door handle the piano black trim surrounding your window controls no auto one touch for the rear but i'm liking this red contrast stitching for the leather area for the armrest easily fit in 20 ounce right next to it one of your bose speakers very impressive legroom too. I'm a little bit over six feet tall. I got a ton of space, at least five, six inches for my knees. Unlimited room for my feet, plenty of space. Air vents, unlike the Santa Cruz that we just reviewed. Two USB ports, map pockets behind or cargo nets behind both of the front seats. This little center cubby area is leather, pretty soft. There's a string attached to it so you don't have to jab your hand into it to open. Pass through, good spot for a phone. And these seats also recline, as you see. So very comfortable back seat here in the 2022 Tucson. The interior lights look like an LED, so also a nice feature for a $31,000 base price SUV, 33 when it's all said and done. That's about it though for the back seat. Let's hop out of here, check out the trunk real quick, and then take this SUV out for a drive. So to open up the trunk, all you gotta do is press the button underneath your tailgate, and it opens right up automatically. It's a nice feature for a vehicle in the segment. Massive massive cargo space this has to be like one of the best in the segment the step in is extremely low it's just about the same height as my knee and i'm a little bit over six feet tall so if you have older or smaller pets they should have literally no problem hopping back here and they'll have a ton of space to do whatever it is they need to do we get the subwoofer in the corner for this bose audio system 12 volt 180 watt in the corner and these latches in the corners also drop your rear seats 60 40 split you drop those seats, I'm expecting you to fit a 70, 75 inch TV back here with no issues. The opening's massive, the cargo area is super impressive. You can close this 
tailgate by simply pressing the button. It gives you a second so you don't have to worry about getting crushed. But that's about it for this 2022 Hyundai Tucson N-Line. Really clean look. I'm loving this body lines. Look how it flares out for the rear. Gives this SUV a nice hip design. Reminds me of the Alfa Romeo Stelvio. I think the styling is extremely similar, especially for the side profile. But we'll hop out front. You can finish off this little exterior walk around. And let's take this 2022 Hyundai Tucson N-Line out for a drive. All right, guys, now we're just about seeing everything we need to see with the inside and outside of this all-new 2022 Hyundai Tucson N-Line. Let's take it out for a drive. And luckily, we got out of this rainstorm without getting too soaking wet. Check it out right now. There's like barely any rain. I wish I started the review right now. I would have been a lot drier altogether. But all in all, first impressions are this steering wheel not only feels incredible in your hands, but the responsiveness is truly remarkable. It feels like an end cart with how responsive the steering is. It's directly on center. That's what I'm saying when I say that this vehicle reminds me of the Alfa Romeo Stelvio. If any of you guys have had the chance to drive that car, you know what I mean when it comes to steering feeling on center. As soon as you even sniff that steering wheel in the Stelvio, you're changing directions. And I think the same applies here. Look at these puddles in the road. It just rains so ridiculously hard. It's gonna be a little while before this clears up. Come on, truck, let me pass. Oh yeah, look at this. Boom, boom. It's a little off-roady over here too on the gas. Oh yeah, you can pick up speed a little bit too. And in the rain, not enough power to really break the wheels loose, at least not from a rolling start. So I guess that's a plus for this 2.5 liter four cylinder, which makes 191 horsepower, 181 pound feet of torque, which isn't bad. As far as the handling, again, the handling in this SUV is fantastic. The ride quality is good. I feel like the Santa Cruz has better ride quality, but riding over, running over those huge puddles, it doesn't really ruin this SUV's composure. Throwing it in, the handling, the steering feels so good in this car. That's definitely my favorite part about it so far. We know that these bumps are huge. Go nice and slow over them. Yeah, I'm sorry, I apologize for like all this wet pavement it's really going to make it tough to test out this car's power but on the bright side this car doesn't really have a whole lot of power anyway so shouldn't be affected too badly but on this road doesn't seem like it's very wet as soon as we pass this last little puddle we'll try an acceleration off the line i don't want to floor it because this will probably still smoke the front tires and we don't want to do that so we'll try to get a good launch about half throttle okay on the gas does not feel all that bad guys and the steering like i said it's a very point and shoot suv huge puddles we don't want to run these over but <laughs> it's like a little obstacle course throwing it in it feels sharp oh you hear all the stuff flying around and the gas pedal feels a little bit slushy it doesn't feel very responsive in the normal mode we'll try it out in sport see what the differences are immediately the transmission downshifts us lean into it one more time try a little acceleration run as soon as this guy passes in. right here on the gas belt a third of the way well, much more responsive it feels torquier too but it looks like we have some empty road we'll try one more little acceleration off the line in sport mode and just see what the differences are so sport mode on the gas yeah transmission really helps this car's performance because again the motor doesn't make a whole lot of power this is the same motor as the santa cruz and it feels just as quick so the santa cruz could do zero to 60 around eight seconds but motor trend tested this car out at like 9.3 so i'll be interested to see why it's that much of a difference but i don't feel it this feels just as quick to me as the santa cruz especially in sport mode this the gas pedal gets more responsive so for daily driving, I'd probably recommend just leaving it in sport. The, assuming that the vehicle allows you to keep your overdrive gears, which we'll check out here. Well, not here, but once we step out to the highway, we'll see if we keep our overdrive. Throw it in a little quicker than we should. Again, the handling is excellent. Look at this. It looks like this road is flooded. All right, guys, taking a step out to this multiple lane highway in sport mode and on the gas. Yeah. Yeah, we get to highway speeds eventually. It's not gonna blow you away when it comes to performance, 
but it's also not terrible. And on the highway, as you see, just cruising along, we are holding almost 3,000 RPM, so uh, it dropped down to about two. But for daily driving, that's gonna really affect your fuel economy. So for daily driving, I'd recommend just leaving it in normal mode where you can still use your overdrive gears. But all in all, this is still a very impressive vehicle. The steering is downright excellent. This is one of the best steering racks that I've felt in really any car. Comparing it to sports cars, the steering genuinely feels excellent. That's by far my favorite part about this car. Back seat space, just about the best in the segment. Same with the trunk space, really impressive of an SUV. No, it's not a better performer compared to the other trims. I kind of wish that it was, obviously. Even if they threw like that 1.6 liter turbo and tuned it to like the Kia Forte GT numbers or the Hyundai Elantra N-Line numbers with 201 horsepower, I think that would make this a true N-Line car, but with this 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder, performance wise, it definitely leaves something to be desired. If you're looking for a performance SUV and a bargain at that, I wouldn't really recommend this for you because it's not much of a performance SUV. It's more of a sporty feeling, regular compact SUV, if that makes any sense. And with the base price at 32,200, I think it's a bargain at that too. Like, no, it's not gonna blow you away in terms of performance. If you're looking for a true performance SUV, I wouldn't send you to this one. But if you're looking for a balance between great space, great tech and nice sporty handling. This is probably the best you're gonna get for the money. And huge thanks to Brandon Hyundai in Brandon, Florida for making this review possible. These guys have an impressive and expanding dealership. So if you're looking for a new car or SUV or truck, because they do sell the Santa Cruz now, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Mac. And huge thanks to all of you guys for watching. I had a great time making this video. Um, if you're new to this channel, please subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. You guys know I have endless gratitude for all subscribers. You know, the channel is just not possible without you guys. And I really appreciate the constant support. But again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe, leave a like too. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Leave a comment, let me know what you like, let me know what you don't like, low fuel. Leave a comment, let me know if there's any specific cars or trucks you'd like to see reviewed in this channel too. And I'll definitely try to get those videos for you as soon as possible. But other than that, again, Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope all of you have a great day.